Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of one of the greatest artists in history, Michelangelo. Known for his masterpieces like the Sistine Chapel and the iconic statue of David, there's so much more to discover about this Renaissance genius. Join us as we uncover nine intriguing facts that you may not know about Michelangelo. So grab a seat, hit that subscribe button, and let's embark on this artistic journey together. In 1972, a person named Laszlo Toth, who was not thinking clearly, went into St. Peter's Basilica and used a hammer to break Michelangelo's Pieta. The attack caused damage to the statue, including breaking off Madonna's nose and forearm, as well as part of her eyelid and veil. Restoration teams later found many pieces of marble from the statue, including one that a tourist had sent to the Vatican after taking it during the chaos. It took 10 months to fix the Pieta before it could be shown again, but this time it was protected behind glass. In 1991, a similar thing happened to the David when someone with a chisel broke off part of a toe on its left foot. Michelangelo spent a lot of his later years making sure St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican was built properly. Even when he couldn't go to the construction site often because he was not feeling well, he kept an eye on the work by sending drawings and plans to trusted workers. Michelangelo loved sculpting the most, though, and he kept working on sculptures in his home studio until he passed away. Just a few days before he died at the age of 88, he was still working on a sculpture called the Rondanini Pieta, which shows Jesus in the Virgin Mary's arms. Michelangelo was famous for his art, but he was also well respected as a writer during his time. He wrote many poems and songs around a few hundred while he was busy working on his sculptures in his workshop. Michelangelo's poetry had a lot of wordplay and covered various topics like sex, getting older, and even his struggles with an overactive bladder, which he expressed as a drippy duct compelling me awake too early, even though he didn't officially publish these works while he was alive. They were widely shared among the educated people in Rome during the 16th century, and some composers even turned them into music. In 1527, the people of Michelangelo's hometown, Florence, kicked out the ruling Medici family and set up a government where everyone had a say. Even though Michelangelo worked for the Medici Pope Clement VII, he supported the new government and became the director in charge of the city's defenses. He took his job seriously, drawing lots of plans for lookout points and even going to nearby towns to study their protective walls. When the Pope's forces tried to take back the city, Michelangelo's designs made it hard for them, and Florence held out for ten months before finally falling in August 1530. Michelangelo could have been punished for being on the other side, but the Pope forgave him and hired him back right away. However, things were still shaky for Michelangelo in Medici-controlled Florence. When the Pope died in 1534, Michelangelo left the city for Rome and never came back. Michelangelo didn't often put his signature on his artworks and he didn't make any formal pictures of himself. But sometimes he would hide drawings that looked like his face in his paintings and sculptures. The most famous one is in his painting called The Last Judgment in the Sistine Chapel from 1541. In that painting, St. Bartholomew is holding a piece of skin and the face on it seems to be Michelangelo's. He also showed himself as St. Nicodemus in his Florentine Pieta, and some experts think he might be in a crowd scene in his painting, The Crucifixion of St. Peter. Starting in 1505, Michelangelo worked for nine different Catholic leaders called pontiffs, from Julius II to Pius IV. He did a lot of different jobs for the Vatican, like making fancy knobs for the Pope's bed, and spending four tough years painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Michelangelo didn't always get along well with the Popes. 
He had a tough time with Pope Julius II, who was argumentative. One time, he worked for three years on a fancy front for a building for Pope Leo Vex, but the Pope suddenly cancelled the whole project. Later on, Michelangelo had better relationships with other popes. Pope Paul III even defended one of Michelangelo's paintings, The Last Judgment, when some church officials thought it had too many naked figures and was inappropriate. When Michelangelo was a teenager, he went to live and learn in the house of Lorenzo de' Medici, who was a very important supporter of the arts in Europe. Michelangelo was really good at using a chisel and paintbrush, and soon all the other students were jealous of him. One guy, Pietro Torrigiano, got so mad about Michelangelo being better, and maybe because of Michelangelo's sharp words, that he punched him in the nose. This hit permanently messed up Michelangelo's nose. Torrigiano even bragged later, saying, I hit him so hard on the nose that I felt bone and cartilage go down like a biscuit beneath my knuckles, and he'll have that mark from me forever. Michelangelo was very particular about the marble he used for his sculptures. However, for his famous statue, David, he used a block of marble that other artists thought was too difficult to work with. This block, known as the Giant, was originally quarried almost 40 years earlier for sculptures intended for the Florence Cathedral. Those sculptures were never made, and the marble had become rough and damaged from being outside. By the time Michelangelo started working on it in 1501, it already had chisel marks from other frustrated sculptors. Michelangelo managed to turn this discarded block into one of his most brilliant works, but recent studies on David suggest that the poor quality of the marble may have caused it to deteriorate faster than other marble statues. In the early days of his career, Michelangelo made a statue of Cupid, inspired by the ancient Greeks. When his supporter Lorenzo di Pierfrancesco de' Medici saw it, he suggested a tricky plan. Medici said, if you make it look like it was buried for a long time, I can send it to Rome and people will think it's an old piece. You can sell it for more money, Michelangelo agreed, and they sold the fake Cupid to Cardinal Raphael Riario, making it seem like they found it as an ancient treasure. Riario later found out about the trick and got his money back, but he was so amazed by Michelangelo's talent that he invited him to Rome for a meeting. Michelangelo stayed in Rome for a few years, and during that time, he got a job to carve the Pieta, the artwork that made him famous as an artist. Thanks for joining us on this insightful journey into the life and artistry of Michelangelo. From hidden self-portraits to unconventional choices in marble, we've uncovered nine intriguing facets of this Renaissance maestro. If you enjoyed learning about Michelangelo and want more art-related content, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Share your favorite Michelangelo fact in the comments below, and let us know what other artists or topics you'd like us to explore in the future. Until next time, stay curious, stay creative, and keep exploring the wonders of art with us. Ciao!